We are live. What's going well, on, GSD? What's up, guys? We are live here, and we are going to be having Dennis Yu join us shortly. Um, I'm going to have to monitor the chat area because I somehow have permissions uh, where I have to permit them to be in. I don't know how to change that. Uh, but anyways, we are going to be talking to the man, the goat himself. He'll be on in about four to five minutes here. So before Dennis jumps on, um, I'm going to let Cody just go freestyle on something, maybe a rap, maybe something that's been working <laughs> for you. Um, let's see what you uh, can come up with at the top of your dome. All right, all right. It's the wrong time of day for a freestyle. Sorry to disappoint everybody in the GSD group. You know, I have to pay for a mastermind, I think, to get that. Kind of By the way, yeah, Cody does freestyle, so he is very good at that. So if you guys drop some hearts, some comments here, maybe we can get him to do one today. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I did hear some good stuff about the – oh, we got a – hello, Basel. Hello, Matt. How's it going, guys? Hope you guys are enjoying the day. We got beautiful weather up here in Vancouver today, which is nice. It's been raining for a week straight, so – that's good. Good day to have the goat on here and talk to him, ask him questions. Guys, if you have any questions before we get Dennis on here, you know, go ahead and drop them all down there so that we can have as many as we can ready to go. We want to make sure that we answer, you know, anything that you guys want to ask whatsoever. We want to dive into it either when he hops on or at the end for a Q&A session. So make sure you guys get in there and let us know. Totally. And if you guys are also enjoying uh, enjoying any kind of like quarantinis, um, let's clear <laughs> it up right now. Just having a little, might as well enjoy ourselves while we're all working from home and being productive. So yeah, here's a, I don't here's have to be a, a, I don't know, Natasha, I, I think we're going to have to have a whiskey Thursday or a whiskey Wednesday or something to do any freestyling on, on the Facebook Live. I don't think <laughs> we'll, we're there. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get that down. So anyway, well, we got Grant we're... on here, Grant, the inventor of the quarantini. Mm -hmm. While we're sitting here with Rahul drinking his own quarantine, so big shout out to Grant for that. <laughs> yeah, totally. So what we're going to be talking about with Dennis, for I'm sure a lot of you guys already know him, but in case you don't, I'm going to introduce him again when he's on. We're going to be talking about some personal branding, how he's done this for companies like Golden State Warriors, GoDaddy, huge, huge brands, and also helped like thousands. Oh, of yeah, companies. he does freestyle, so he is very. Oh, here we go. We got the man jumping in himself. Here we are. I hit admit and I think he disappeared. He comes back on. Okay. All right. There he is. There he is. How you doing, Dennis? We're just connecting. Hey. Now. How's it going, Dennis? Good, man. How you doing, Rahul? Uh, doing awesome. Doing awesome. And we got Cody here. He's on my team as well. He's going to kind of chill out, ask some questions as well with us. Uh, awesome. How, where it looks it looks great where you are. are you in arizona i'm in arizona i'm one block away not even my house is right there and we got a park there's a beautiful park here and i thought i'd share with everyone how you can build your seven figure agency right here on the phone i'll show all the tricks and how everything that you thought you could do on desktop you actually can do better on your phone I love it. I love it. So before we dive into how Dennis is going to show us how to make seven figures here uh, using our phone in a park, I want to do a quick introduction because a lot of you guys probably already know who Dennis is, but for those of you guys that may not be as familiar, he's the CEO of Blitzmetric, uh, built Blitzmetric. He's taught students all across the world, not only students to run businesses from running Facebook agencies, videos, branding, and processes and hiring. Uh, but also a lot of big, huge brands out there, how to do the same. And some of those include Golden State Warriors, which some of you guys may have heard of, and GoDaddy, which you may have heard of. And I mean, he has a great background being uh, an analytics executive from Yahoo. So with that being said, Dennis, thanks for taking the time today. Yeah, thank you guys. Hey, who, who do we got on the call? How many folks do we have here? Right, because see. I know we're streaming to Facebook. We have 11 right soon. now. We have okay. 11 now and more people should be jumping on soon. Okay. I'm wondering, can we see the engagement here on Zoom or I've got to go into the, the group to see mm -hmm. it? Because I want this to be participatory. I want you or maybe Rahul or your, your partner can hold everyone accountable. Okay, let's do that. Cody, right, we'll we'll, we'll call that my job. We'll call that my job, Dennis. I'm okay. The comments right now. Okay. There's lots of people talking on so. Okay, good, good. So I want everyone to hold up their phone as proof that they have their phone and we're going to go through a bunch of exercises together. This is not some watch Dennis talk webinar. Okay. Beautiful. I, I'm, I'm tired of webinars. I want to do stuff. 
Let's do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to do it too. I was gonna hold this till the end, but let's go right into the freaking. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this now because uh, a lot of people think it's about these these weird techniques, and I know lots of weird techniques on Facebook and how to run ads. And my buddy Brian Rosenthal is the one who built Power Editor at at my request. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> he he copied Google AdWords editor. He said, "What should I do?" And I said, "You want to have a left, uh, you know, a vertical horizontal layout." I'm not I'm not into that stuff now because it doesn't work like it used to. The algorithms are too smart. Now what you have to do is make 15 second videos and you want to reply with video. Okay? So what I want you to do, I'm going to start and by the way, we're on Zoom, at least we're Google and I are, and I'm going to start sharing my screen, which is a lot a lot of people don't realize it's really possible. So it says, you know, screen broadcast three, two, one. And then now, let me know, can you see my screen? Type yes, yeah, yes in the I comments can. if you can see my screen. What do you see? We'll look at some yeses in the comments. Can you guys see Dennis's screen? What do you guys see? We got your phone. Front screen. You my phone, yes, okay. And on the bottom here, I've got Facebook, not the ads manager in the top right, not business manager, not these other tools. Okay, now this is me on Facebook. Oh, look, there's our group invited me to join okay uh, let's see what's going on here okay you know what this will be inception i'll just go ahead and join your group and i'll say uh inception that's what i specialize in <laughs> <laughs> will you accept me okay and there's the lot you know what i wonder if i can break facebook watch this okay yep i even see my phone there that is awesome now i can reply with video, that's the key. Now, most most of the time, people say blah 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 with text here. Like here, I can type in blah blah blah, but that's not what I'm interested in. That that's what anyone else would do. That's what they would do, right? I'm gonna come here, and then oops, blah blah blah. Oh, I can comment that's here. Not the Sorry, that, that's not what I'm interested in. That that's what anyone else would do. That's what they would do. Uh, how do I get out of this? Now I'm in the in the live chat. Dang it. I think you did just break Facebook for a second. I did. <laughs> here, here it is. Here it is. Okay. Now I'm in my video, and it's, it's you see my face. So I'm gonna re I'm gonna reply with a video comment and say, "Hey, did you guys know that you can reply with a video comment? It is fantastically awesome, right?" Oh shoot, I didn't do that right. Let me try it again. Discard photo. Can I not get my video here? I think ah, your, your camera is using two different things. I don't oh, know. you know what it is? It won't let me. Yeah, because it'll it'll let me do it if. Yeah, because the Zoom thing is confusing it, but normally it'll work. But anyway, I would reply with the video, and that would be my comment. Well, and what's, one of my what's, interesting about, what's interesting about that, Dennis, is that's why you and I are even on this live right now. It was a video exchange. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, so check this out. Zoom thing is confusing it, but normally it'll get work. Out of this but anyway, I would reply with the video and that would be my comment. Okay, see, I'm gonna get out of that. Okay, so um, here's one. This guy is a chiropractor, apparently, Brandon Brown. You have to love the Dennis U strategy, trust me, do it. So let's see, what did he just posted this 12 minutes ago, you can see, right? 68 people reached 36 through plays, a cost of a penny per through play. Do you guys know what a through play is? Tell me yes or no in the group yes yes or no do you know what a through play is this is so key on facebook if you do not know what a through play is you do not know what you're optimizing to if you guys what are, are advertising seeing? on facebook you better know what a through play is drop some yeses yeah, yeah. on that know it. and if, you, if the answer is no that's okay i'll explain are people <laughs> saying what, what does it look like we got Getting... you guys gotta you guys gotta answer in the comments there he is. alvin alvin's dropping information on there then hasha says nope alvin dropped the right answer okay well, a through play is 15 seconds or more, or the full length of the video if the video is shorter than that. Now, when you boost a post face, that has a video, by definition, it's going to go for a through play as the optimization, unless you put in a button or unless you choose messages as your option. Okay. Now, this guy, he did this, and he's getting penny through plays. What is he doing? He's sharing kind, some kind of why story. So he could be doing this. Like, watch. So I'm not just going to tell you. I'm going to show you. So I'm going to come to my camera. I go to video. I don't know, where's my video? This is like not wanting, oh, you know what it is? It's because this, this silly Zoom thing won't let me do it because I won't let me go to the video thing. But I record a little video and then I would 
post that to my page, my page, not my profile. So do you guys know the difference between a page and a profile? This is also critical, mm -hmm. right? So if, if I come here to Facebook and I search for Dennis Yu, check this out. All right, you see that? Now the one, the first one there is a page. It's a company page that's called Dennis Yu, which you should have too. And below that is my profile, which is me as a person on Facebook. So is anyone, now I, I know a lot of people that are, they claim to be social media experts, but they do not understand this point. If you miss this point, everything that we're talking about will be garbage to you. It won't matter. Okay, now you see this? Yep. Blue check mark, doesn't matter. By the way, you can have your blue check mark on either your page or your profile, not both. I've seen some people get both, but Facebook will bust you on that. If you are verified, you can switch it. And you have 5,000 friends is the limit. And you can see that I have these various posts. So Rahul just did this, that's awesome. Thank you for promoting both of those. That's how we get traction here. Then I'm posting things. I'm elevating other people. So look, hey, my buddy Owen, he's got an agency helping people make videos and he's got a little course on how do you do video. So I'm just sharing that. And I do that not because I'm trying to have this abundance mindset, which is important. I don't, I don't talk about mindset, but because it's actually great driving word of mouth because reciprocation is if I do this, then he's going to reply back. So this guy, Sheldon, he said, who are the top people you follow on social? And he put me in there. I'm like, oh, wow, what an honor. Thank you so much, right? Well, I'm doing dumb things. I was here at the park yesterday and I used to play ultimate Frisbee. So I literally just held the phone and I wanted to demonstrate that I still got it. I can take the Frisbee and I can huck it the length of a football field. Isn't that kind of cool? Like, do you have a weird skill? Right? My weird skill is I can huck a Frisbee a really long way, <laughs> right? I think it's 120 meters, 120 yards. See the other end of that? I have it in Zoom so you can see the... Because, you know, the iPhone 11 has got the three cameras. So I just demonstrate how to do it. And I'll say, like, you know, hey, you need to get out to the park. Watch me do it. Right? There it is. And then I, then, uh, then I huck it. And you watch the frisbee go all the way. To, so I'm trying to get it all the way to the goal the other side. Anyway, just random. Does that, does that have anything to do with anything? No, it doesn't. Here's one. Now, remember, I'm balancing between what I'm saying and what other people are saying. So here's somebody who said that they came to – I use Dennis's technique – and my response rates increased and I'm growing my agency and I'm helping small businesses or I'm getting more people to my pizza restaurant or whatever it is, right? Did I ask her to do this? No. Is this one of these bogus sorts of, you know, testimonials where they don't actually say anything? No, she's actually talking about how she did it, right? I'm accepting podcasts left and right. So here, this guy says, oh, I'm doing a podcast with Dennis on Saturday and there's me and Billy Jean. Okay, that's cool, I guess. And now here's someone else who's tagging me. And so I'm getting people to make one minute videos and 15 second videos. Oh, here's, here's a friend who's a chiropractor. And I told, and Dr. Laura, she said, oh, but I don't wanna be on video, it's not professional or you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, don't, don't worry about it. Just show people what you're up to. Show people your office. Tell people that you're still open, right? How many local businesses, they're, they're open sort of, like for a few hours or they're open for delivery or they can still take phone calls. Like my friend, Rachel, she does, tax stuff so she's busy doing the whole you know relief ppp thing and and she's going live talking about what's going on with how do you apply for the loan and what are the ways to get declined and what things you should do and and so these people are they're just merely sharing now notice this is a vertical video it's not run as an ad but you can boost the post if it's from oh these car videos for some reason the car videos tend to do the best look she put her phone number here right that's awesome right just don't do it while you're driving, right? Oh, look, she's talking about how to do a virtual hug where you don't actually hug, but you bring your arms sort of close together, right? And, and these are, and I'm here, I'm sharing a tip. I posted this, what is it, uh, two days ago. Southwest has got all their flights super duper cheap on sale. So I just booked a whole bunch of them knowing I could change it. I'm just talking about that and people are arguing or agreeing or, so I have a lot of these things. Now, this is my profile, okay? I cannot boost these posts. I do not get analytics on these posts, but, if I come to my page, this first one, I can cross post to my page. So what I want you to do, I can't seem to do this right now because of Zoom, but I want you to take a post from your profile and I want you to cross post it to your page. Now, Dennis, how often do you do those cross posts? Is it every single post or is it just selective posts? Well, I try to have a post a day. So mm -hmm. if I don't really have many posts, then I'll just cheat and have it be cross-posted, 
And in fact, I use our internal community manager team to do that cross posting for me. You can also use <coughs> onlinejobs.ph or Fiverr or Fancy Hands or whatever. Uh, if you're an agency, you probably should have an operations VA who's like a general VA who will do things like cross posting or project management or you know collect money or nudge people who didn't like clients who haven't submitted their access or whatever you need from them. So I don't do that except just demonstrate it like I do now. But normally I just, we practice learn, do, teach, which is I do it to show other people how you do it. And then other people can just follow behind me. Okay, right. so you can see that I have these posts and I'm boosting them. Some of them I boost for a lot of money. I start with a dollar a day, of course, but then if it's working well, then I'm gonna boost it more. So here, this is that Frisbee post. Now you saw I posted on my profile. Okay, there it is. You can't really see the frisbee, can you? Maybe you have to no, zoom it in. A, like there's a little latency behind it. So while you're okay. scrolling, it's right. Okay, I see the, there it is. I see it right there now. Okay. So now I'm hitting the blue boost post button. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear a lot of people say, oh, don't boost a post. It's what idiots do or something. No, it's the, it's because you don't know what you're doing. If you have the right content, vertical video, that's selfie style and is fun, and it's from a public figure page, and you have your audience to set up, this will work very well. Now, if you screw up and don't do these things, yeah, boosted posts will suck. Boosted posts work because they look like they are, I didn't say they are, I said they look like they are organic, personal, non-selling, non-advertising kind of engagement. So we're using it primarily at top and middle of the funnel, but you can use it for remarketing down to the bottom of the funnel. Okay, so I've got this post, cross-posted it, and you can see here, Facebook has default chosen learn more and they put my website there. Now, why the heck would anyone want to come to my website after sh me demonstrating a technique on how to throw a Frisbee the length of a football field? Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. So what I'm going to do is this. You have to change this every single time. Otherwise, you're going to get hosed and they're going to charge you way more and you're going to say it didn't work. So you're going to choose get more video views. Now, if you want people to talk to you, if your video message is, hey, you know, a lot of us are stuck at home and we need to be able to connect with our customers. And I'd love to show you how to do that on an iPhone. Contact me. My name's Rahul and I'm going to show you how to do that. So then you could click, you know, um, get more messages, right? But only if now it opens a message. Now it says send message, right? But that's not my goal. My goal 90% of the time is to get more video views. But some people are like, well, if I have the option to choose a button and an option to get, you know, something deeper in the funnel, why wouldn't I do that? is because the cost of that traffic goes five to 10 times more. So instead of paying $3 per thousand impressions, you're gonna pay $20 or maybe even $40 per thousand impressions. So choose lower funnel objectives if you're willing to pay five to 10 times more. Sometimes you do, like remarketing against website custom audiences, people who've been to your site, yeah, that's worth it. Like a 24 hour remarketing audience, yeah, it's worth it. But generally, no, you wanna be as high in the funnel as you can based on the nature of what people would expect from that content. So now I got no button. See, now it looks like an organic post, except it says sponsored there in gray, real small, but people can't see that because they're scrolling so fast. The average person is scrolling 100 meters per day in their Facebook mobile newsfeed, 100 meters per day. That's 37% faster than on desktop. You add in Facebook, Instagram, and desktop, they're going 200 meters per day. That's a lot, that's a lot of carpal tunnel. So I have this no button, get more video views. Now I'm gonna choose an audience, okay? Oh, look, I've got all these saved audiences. Can you imagine that? People who are in the media, who work at, not who like, who work at Social Media Examiner and Forbes and Bloomberg and all this, right? That works really well if I'm trying to get media attention on something. Or people who like Infusionsoft, because we do a lot of stuff with Infusionsoft. So anything about Infusionsoft, I'm going to use their thing. Or um, influential people, or people who went to, or people who have, Look at this, I've got all these targets. So you have to pre-build your targets, okay? You don't wanna be building them on the fly because then it becomes a mess. And I have people who are fans of this. I have people who've engaged with another page because we have a lot of Mormons, so that tends to work pretty well. Friends of fans, because then it'll say so-and-so likes this. And I have, look, I have custom audiences. So these are people who've been to our website in the last 180 days. You see that WCA all visitors 180? Mm -hmm. So that's based on the pixel. 
So if you have your digital plumbing set up, we have a whole course on that. If you ask me for it, I'll give it to you. And that's how you set up your email audiences, your website custom audiences based on the pixel, all tied back in the tag manager, which drives your Google Analytics, Google Remarketing, Facebook Pixel, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Quora, all your pixels in one place via universal pixel. I have all the people who work at LinkedIn. That's kind of cool. I have all these different audiences, fans of GoDaddy, right? And I know the GoDaddy people, the people who are fans of GoDaddy have seen our stuff because <clears throat> when we've done a live webinars from the GoDaddy Facebook page, then I'm cutting pieces of that out and just feeding them lots and lots of content. So check this out. Just to prove it to you, because I always, I don't just tell you like this. I only tell you stuff that I shall do Heather, I'm getting spell right. Dobson, can't even, what is, should be smart enough. Okay, there, right? So here is stuff like this one. And this is live on the GoDaddy page, right? You see that? So the, a and then if I scroll through here, then I'll see parts where we talk about it. Oh, or I haven't had this great experience, or I think, I don't see? know, like, what am I doing wrong? Now, there's snippets I can pull. So many different analogies now. on produce value, and they need to see your and stuff. Little 30 seconds. Repost and reshare. All right. I've got so many of these. Now, you don't need to have this many. Now, this is people who have been to the social media examiner page, or people who've, who've attended one of our events, or people who have watched the video from Logan Young, or because we got tons of pages we're admin on, right? Look like audiences. You don't need to do this for your local clients. So if you're servi servicing, you know, dentists, plumbers, chiropractors, you really only need four or five audiences. One is the entire geo. Two is website custom audiences. And three is an email audience, all audiences, and then uh, past customers. Oh, I'm sorry. And the last one, the most important one is a native video engagement audience. Anyone who's a through play. Remember, that's why it's important. The 15 second plus in the last 28 days, not last 365, which is the default, the last 28 days, okay? And that way you can just keep dripping on them lots and lots of content. So the more people watch your videos, the larger those video remarketing tools become. So if you're posting- So these, I'm doing this off of my page. Right. So if somebody but, doesn't have a, a business page or they, have ver they don't use it, they're using their personal profile as their business page, are you somebody to build up their audience for their page? Yeah. You're, so first off, you need to have that page. Right. And when most people say page, they mean their profile. A page is a business page that has your name on it or your company name. Go to facebook.com slash pages slash manage. And then you can create, click on the button in the top right and create a new page. And then you can just start cross posting. Now, if it's a new page, it has no fans. It's like a new website. It gets no traffic. What's the sound of one social media consultant falling in the forest, right? So you want to, when you have that, you're going to start boosting. You're going to click that blue button and you're going to start boosting the custom audiences. You're going to start boosting to your vertical. Now, if you're clear on who you serve, you serve chiropractors. You serve people who are in San Diego in the travel industry. You serve like, who, like be clear. Don't say you just serve small business. That's nobody. Small business is an other category. Do not ever say you serve small business. Serve a particular, you know, you serve chiropractors. You serve Italian restaurants. Be, be specific on that niche. <clears throat> then you can target and hit that boost post button. And then start to get lots and lots of things here. So he called back. Raise your paw if you would like my help to start your drinks, okay? I think, hey, Dennis. I had all these people that are interested. Hey, hey Dennis, it's getting a little and bit. And how do I know this is working? Oh, I'll move back over to where I was before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, sorry. I was over the hill. I was literally over this other hill. I'm walking in the park. I'm getting exercise while we're doing our little webinar thing. So <laughs> let me know in the comments, yes, if you've boosted a post before or no, and then tell me why you haven't because someone told you it didn't work or you haven't tried it or because you didn't know or and, and what's the feedback. So let I me mean, know. I think, I think a lot of it is when marketers hear boosted posts from their client, they're more concerned about getting retainers. Than they boosted posts work. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> oh, so so the issue is us as agency owners are trying to drive more clients. Is that it? Yeah, like so. So if so, like for instance, let's say I had a conversation with a chiropractor, and they uh -huh. and I call them and say, hey, well, we can help you market yourself, do the top of funnel, the middle of funnel, etc. And come. Uh -huh. and, and I say, all right, my retainer is fifteen hundred, my ad spend is five hundred to a thousand, and then uh -huh. like, well, I can spend five bucks boosting a post. A marketer may say, well, boosted posts don't work. Yeah, well, I'm the doctor, and the patient doesn't tell the doctor how to do it. And <laughs> right. they say we're building three stages in the funnel, okay? Now, as a chiropractor who wants to be able to drive more appointments and all, you're not going to drive it off of one video or off of one landing page or off – I mean, you might drive it off of a Google ad because the intent's really high. But on Facebook, which is what we're covering for this session, you've got to know – build a know, like, and trust. People need to know who you are. They need to identify with you as a person. They need to first know that you're even open right? Because they don't even see you. That's the issue with the, when you're serving these chiropractors or orthodontists or personal energy attorneys, like they're not, they're just at home doing whatever and they're not making any content. So literally, as you'll see from these other examples and have seen, when we encourage these local businesses to just post saying, hey, I'm open. Oh, I'm at home. This is my daughter's favorite video game. And, you know, we watch it all the time now or whatever it is. Like we're just showing that we're human, right? Here. We got a dog and a bunny. The dog is very interested in the bunny. The bunny's not even afraid, right? It seems ridiculous to boost that, but I can tell you, this drives leads. It drives leads for you as an agency trying to get more chiropractors or whatever, and it drives more patients and clients for that underlying chiropractor. And what I'll do is, like, I'll even in a Zoom call, I'll even point my phone at the screen and if someone has something good. I'm like, Hey, why don't you go ahead and share that? Wow. That was awesome. Right. And then I'm boosting it. And sometimes you can have stuff like this, like this got 1600 reach just organically. Cause there's no dark orange, right? Light orange is organic, dark orange. Right. This, this does so well, shoot, I can share that to my story. Of course, I'm going to share that to my story, to my pages story. And then I say, thank you. Hey, I love Michael Krigsman. He's, you know, done so much for me. And this is when I was at the Grand Canyon, whatever, two weeks ago, before they shut all the national parks down. You can peek over the edge. Oh, wow. Right. I might boost that post so that people can see that I'm alive. So the whole boosted post don't work. You're right. The, the, the boosted post doesn't drive leads immediately. It drives people into a remarketing audience. And this is key. In Facebook Ads Manager, I can't do this on my phone. I'm going to create a video view remarketing audience of all through plays that have watched any of my videos in the last 28 days and i'm going to remarket them into you need to fix a policy related problem what the heck is this personal attributes policy did i violate i don't think i said i didn't say anything bad sure what's wrong with my text Question. Yeah. Were, were you the question mark? Oh, you. That's right. Yeah. I'm scared. I'm scared of heights. There we go. So I'll just boost it. Video views, not learn more because I wanted, I'm going to, I'm not trying to get them to come to my site right away. I'm trying to get them to, I'm, I'm getting them to a remarketing audience so Facebook can deliver the next message, which yes, I have to pay for, but it only cost me a couple cents. Okay, there's my button. Oh, wait, stay. Can I not? No button. Yeah, that's right. Put more video views. Learn more. What? I just said no button. Can I not get down to the bottom of this thing here? Oh, save, sorry. Okay, there it is. And I will choose, well, I got a lot of these audiences. Who am I gonna choose? I'm gonna show you a couple of really cool things too that you haven't seen before. Let's see, oh, Fusion Stop Digital Marketer, friends of fans. Okay, good. Looking for that. Um, so posting something like the Grand Canyon and getting uh -huh. that in front of people, the purpose is to get Dennis Yu, to get them to know Dennis Yu as a human being and stay top of mind, am I correct? So Rahul, if you wanted to, or anyone here, if you wanted to, you know, whatever, get married, you wouldn't just walk up to the next woman you see and say, marry me. You build a relationship over time. They need to hear about you. They know about you. 
And this is called a law of proximity. People are more likely to marry or do business with or whatever with people that they have met. So let's say you have a babysitter and she's not great, but she's okay, but she's the girl next door versus some babysitter. She's got an, an incredible resume, all this, you've never met her. You're gonna choose the one you know, even though she might not be better. There's just a level of comfort. People will choose people they've seen stuff with, even if it has nothing to do with adjusting your back or digital marketing. That's just how people are. Studied psych psychology behind the law of proximity and how that works. So here, I just boosted this post. Now, all these people are gonna see it. It's gonna cost me almost nothing. All right, now let me show you another way to take this to the next level. Level, And I'll go to my friend, Brendan King, okay? Brendan King's the CEO of Vendasta, one of my friends. I knew him before he started the company. And he's got a really cool piece of software for anyone who runs local agencies. And so he's posting pictures of where he's at and you know memories and what he's doing. Okay, so now check this out. Debbie Gibson. Hey, Debbie Gibson here. How are you, my friend? Listen, your amazing friend, Dennis Yu, dropped by to let me know that with all the devastation caused by the coronavirus, that you are helping people start digital marketing agencies at no charge courses, support, I am so, so thrilled that you're doing that. That is so generous of you. And Dennis wanted to let you know that he's so proud to be working with you to serve local businesses. So he sent me as a little thank you gift. She did this in 1986. Uh, and I wanted to sing a little bit of one of your favorite songs of mine to send you my thanks. On Cameo, I can get all sorts of people for, you know, Brett Favre or whoever, celebrities, athletes. And I've bought hundreds of these here from different people. Oh, there's Debbie Gibson. There she is. There's, you know, Marcus Lamonis or, you know, any anybody. You can get people for, you know, $5, $10. just depends on who you want. I, had, I hired Flavor Flav for one, but he didn't do a very good job. <laughs> You can see these other people. And then what happens is that, so I'll go to my messages and you'll see like how many of these I've bought. And then what I do is I run it through our VA process. They post it on my profile and or my public figure page. Look, Perez Hilton, Cali Muscle. Can you guys see this? Type in yes in the chat if you can see this. You see what I'm doing here, right? And what I'll do is I'll even do it live. Like this is when I'd go to a conference because he's so fast, this guy Perez Hilton, he's not as fast as he was before. I'll start at the beginning. I'll say, hey, somebody asked a question about, you know, whatever. Some, so there's no way we could have pre-recorded it. And then Perez Hilton will come in and answer it and give greetings to people. I was for my friend, Mark. Let's see, what is this? Mark! I feel like I know you because my friend Dennis Yu speaks so highly of see, you. One there. Mark Lack. You see Even though I don't know you, I know any of them. I'll click on any like another one of these. I just happen to like Chris Hilton, but he's changed his price. It's gone up. It used to be like twenty bucks. Now it's like a hundred. Hey there. Hey, Cortez. It is Perez. Our names are so similar, and we have something else in common. Dennis Yu, who I love, I did that is the one best was Curtis of Riggs the best. runs the military influencer conference. So that's thousands of veterinarians, people who've just gotten out of the military, people who are selling, you know, uh, military-related sorts of things like black rifle coffee and shirts and stuff like that. And I taught a workshop in D.C. and I said, "Hey, Curtis, you know," or I, I asked everybody, "Hey, what, what kind of..." Greeting, should we have a shout out? Should we have a Cortez? So I crowdsourced a few 
questions and things like that. And I loaded this up into Cameo and had Perez answer it. And, you know, I stalled for 30 or 40 minutes. And then by the end of my presentation, I saw that I got this notice back saying that this thing was, was ready. Right. And then I played it and, and then people's jaws dropped. It was just incredible. Right. Awesome. So I've done tons of these. Then I can take that video and I can chop it up into different pieces. I can post it here on Instagram. So you can see on Instagram, I've got, oh, there's my friend, Sean Dill. He runs a bunch of groups for chiropractors. I can reply to these people. But what I'm doing is I'm intentionally trying to cut out video snippets that I can reuse. So if I come here to, let's see if I go back a little further to Brendan. I asked Brendan, so tell me, um, what is your, what's your favorite Debbie Gibson song? And do you have any questions for her? And then I, I, I took, you know, actually, I'll just do a search so you, so you can see. I'm not even kidding. This, I'm literally telling you what I'm doing. <clears throat> so look, I said, hey, do you have a favorite Debbie Gibson song? He said, it'd be only in my dreams. Why? And I say, you'll see why. And then I got that video. And he says, hey, where do I go? And I looked at it. He's like, oh, it's amazing. All right. Then he shares that with everyone else on Instagram and on Facebook. And now I've leveraged word of mouth because anyone who's a friend of Brendan who's probably someone very successful now knows who I am. And so what I've, I've used inception to get other people to talk about me. Right. And this is the same thing you do with customers with word of mouth, with clients that you've taken care of. So of all of us here in this agency group with Rahul, do you have a, an amazing client that you can talk about in a non testimonial spammy way, in a way where you're actually teaching from their experience, you're actually demonstrating Here's how you do something like here. If we come to back to my Facebook, look at my notifications here. Let's see. Somebody's tagged me in something. What's this? There are a bunch of files that Dennis shows off. Um, can we get access to it? Yeah. Then our people are going to come and reply. That's not a one. What's this one? What's this? Dennis, you bringing his 12 minutes ago. Great training. High five. Okay. Then I reply with a video, right? And I'm getting other people to, to do my work for me. So my question to you, do you have a lighthouse client, one that you want to get 50 more of this thing? That's how you're going to scale. You want to get more clients? Who's the best client you want that you want 50 more of? And I'm going to stop the broadcast so I can see what you guys are saying. Yeah. By the way, guys, if you guys have any questions, please drop them in the in the comments. So I'm sure you guys do have some questions. And at the end, by the way, Dennis has been kind enough to give away a personal branding cheat sheet. So for those of you guys that want it to get it, do hashtag cheat sheet and we'll get it over to you. Yeah. So my question to you is tell, tell me in the comments, <clears throat> who is your lighthouse? Either you already have one of these clients and you want 50 more or hundred more, or you, you want to develop in that particular niche, right? Because a lighthouse is one, like what we've done for the Golden State Warriors <clears throat> until recently, we had them for five years as a client. We ran their, their ads and analytics. We, I would put the head of marketing from the Warriors on stage. I would interview him. I'd write articles about him and nowhere where was I trying to say, oh, Blitzmetrics is really good because we you know, I figured out how to integrate with Ticketmaster and pull primary and secondary revenue, or we understand how to shoot or, or get the right shot list at the games to be able to get the things we need for our ads, right? Or we know what to do with season ticket sale holders versus corporate sponsors, or we didn't, I didn't do any of that. What I did was I had them say it. And then when they said it, I would boost the crap out of it and make them look good. And then they would share it. And then the rest of the NBA, the rest of the people at Facebook, They'd know about it. The folks at Google, of course, saw the stuff that we were sharing. And then our guy who, who ran digital at the Warriors, he left his job to go work at Facebook to run global sports, global sports partnerships, all the pro sports teams, all the collegiate teams worldwide. And guess what happened when other sports teams would say, hey, you know, we need someone to run our digital or, you know, we, we need help on Facebook ads. Who do you recommend? Who do you think he recommended? Right. So it's just stuff like that. So do you, let me ask you, let me know in the comments. Do you have a lighthouse client? And, or do you, are you seeking towards that lighthouse client? 
what are you doing towards the lighthouse client? Because that is what you're going, that is what is going to drive sales for you. Okay. Oh, there we go. Lighthouse, lighthouse. How do I pause this thing? Darn, I'm going to look at this thing here. A lighthouse client is one where they do the work for you. So you almost never have to talk about yourself. Okay. You are, you are elevating them. You are interviewing them. You are publishing cheat sheets and guides. And here's how you do one, two, three, four, five. You are literally giving away how you do what you do. Here's how I make a Facebook ad. Here's how I set up the marketing pixel. Here's how I edit the video. Here's how I set up a landing page. Here's how I price things. Here's how I do everything. And you might think, especially if you're a smaller agency, you might think, oh, but then they're not going to hire me. But Rahul, what happens when you do that? Well, yeah, they're, they're probably going to get stuck. They're not going to be able to execute. And then they're going to need to hire yep. you anyways. Yep. So we have a 1200 page operating manual that shows how we do everything step by step and includes links to videos. We have 2000 videos inside that document. It covers everything. Right. And when I shared that out, other people were like, oh, well, all these agencies now they are going to compete against you. I'm like, no, they're not. And if they are, they, they deserve it more than we do. I, now I have spent 20 years putting this thing together. A lot of it was when I built the analytics function at Yahoo 20 years ago. So I know a little something about search. A lot of people are like, oh, Dennis, he was a social media guy. He doesn't understand search. I'm an analytics engineer. You go ahead and tell that to me, right? And I put it out there and, and the small-minded people who only have a couple of clients, like I need everything I can. I'm going to say yes to every potential meeting. And if, if some client says, well, do you also do landing pages and chatbots? And like, yes, yes, I do SEO. Yes, I do this. Yes, because they need the money. So they feel like they got to say yes to everything. And they're like, oh, well, if that, if that, you know, that agency wins a client and that's less money for me. And like, dude, there right now is the very, very, very best time I've ever seen for digital agencies. There's been no better time. Not that I wish destruction on the planet, but if you're not making money right now as a digital agency, something is wrong with you. The number of new clients that we've gotten in the last month. Okay. Now we lost a few clients like, you know, MGM resorts, international which owns half of las vegas half the casinos there they were our clients so you can imagine they shut down so they weren't paying anymore but we okay so we lost a whole bunch of them but the the number that we gained is way higher we have so many clients that we don't we can't even take them on by a lot like we have like 300 clients we can't even take on right now so if your struggle is is you don't have any clients or you want more clients there's something wrong with the way you're doing your marketing and it's probably because you're not sharing how you're doing the work because you're afraid that if you do then they're not going to hire you or maybe you don't have your processes documented because you never got around to it because it's just you and you haven't hired other people and oh well dennis has a team of 200 people so that you know he's got all these people doing editing and processes and operations like yeah but you know what you could do you could take our training and put your name on it give us a little bit of credit and then you could say, look, I got a process. This is how I do personal branding. This is how I set up tracking. This is how I send out weekly status reports. This is how I build campaigns. This is how we do the three by three video grid. So if you honor us, we're totally happy for you to take our stuff. And that will generate leads for you. There's so much business, pretty much every business out here, if, you go, if you're allowed to walk around in whatever town you're in, every business out here is dying to try to survive and they want your help. 100%. No, I love that. I love your thought process is give the farm away for free, share knowledge, yeah. make it go viral. And when people get stuck or they now need somebody, you're obviously the top of mind guy that has probably trained them using, they're using yeah. your manuals already. Yeah. It fits in perfectly that with the idea that, you know, people pay for organized information, not for disorganized information. So when you're giving away all the stuff, you don't have to worry about giving away all your secrets. They're not going to take that and use it. They're going to pay you. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going to say something offensive. Most of the clients out there, you should say no to <clears throat> because they're free tarts. And that means they, like any of these DIY or oh, I can get it done in India for cheaper or whatever. You know what? Go for it. So when you put out your training and know-how, you're basically saying, look, if you don't value your time and you just want to mess around on YouTube and watch videos all day long, knock yourself out. Here it is. Here's our processes. In fact, Here's some other people that I think are the best in the world at doing this versus this versus this. Here they are. These are the people that I follow. So if you just want to save that extra bit of whatever money, go ahead and do that. But if you value your time and if you want to get it right, 
And this is one I say, and I learned this from Bruce Clay, who was the first, he actually invented the term search engine optimization 23 years ago. Can you imagine that? My, my friend Bruce Clay did this. And have, he was the first. Uh, I have really quick, Dennis. I grew yeah. up with Brian Clay, his son, since we were in like second grade. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so uh, he, he was the first to get to $10 million as an SEO agency. And he said that you, you have to charge appropriately because if you don't, people won't think that you're good enough. And he told me, I remember we were in Seattle at, a, at Microsoft's launch of Bing and we were standing under the Space Needle. And I said something dumb to him. I'm like, Bruce, how the heck are you able to charge these ridiculous retainers that work out to basically like 2000 bucks an hour? And he said, Dennis, you, <clears throat> what you do is you stand in the middle of the road with your arms up and you declare that you are the best and half the people will say, that guy's nuts. He's, you know, whatever, smoking crack. And then the other half will say, he must be good. He must be the best. And then Bruce said, it's like, um, you know, a, a, a potential patient comes up to you, your heart surgeon and his, his son is the one needing the heart surgery. Do you think he's shopping around for the cheapest heart surgeon? for the one who's like 50% off. Imagine like you come to me, I'm a heart surgeon. Let's pretend I'm wearing the, the whole like hospital stuff. And, and I say, hey, Rahul, if you sign up by Friday, I'll give you 50% off your heart surgery and I'll throw in a brain surgery too. <laughs> if you're a marketer, don't ever do things that devalue who you are. Most marketers are doing used car salespersons because they're, and I get it. They're saying like, yeah, I'll hop on a free call with me. And you know, well, we can talk about your stuff and you know, I'm, I'm very affordable. Like never say nonsense like that. You ever hear a surgeon, would you ever trust a surgeon says I'm very affordable? <laughs> yeah, just like it, just like a lawyer, you probably wouldn't want to trust that either. <laughs> no. So you you have to I'm not saying boast and pretend that you're something that you're not and misrepresent and fake it till you make it. I'm not saying that. I am saying make sure that you you act more like a doctor than a used car salesperson. And then patients, you'll get the right patients when you publish when you publish your techniques, people will come to you and respect you more. And in fact, it reduces the lead gen costs that you have because instead of getting on a free call, like how many of you guys still do things like free calls? You get on the phone with them and give them a free hour because you feel like, well, how am I going to get them as a client unless I get on the phone with them and give them a free hour and I explain who you are and explain how you do stuff and explain what you do and don't do and your processes and all that. How many times have you wasted an hour with that? Because, and only at the end of the hour, you realize like, oh crap, I just lost to you or if you still do that now we publish our stuff because we never get <clears throat> by the time we get them on a call we're there to work out the details it's like someone coming into the emergency room if anyone walks into the emergency room they're sick they're ready to have surgery or you know the wound or whatever it is like that their doctors rule cool. walks in and they say, uh, I'd like to meet, I'd like you to line up every single one of your doctors and, it, and in five minutes explain what they do. And then I'm going to decide whether I want to hire one of your doctors. What would you say to that? If we're in the emergency room, we're busy working on patients and someone came in and said that, what would you say? <laughs> I would think that would be absolutely ridiculous. So then how many of us are still parading our stuff and having one hour free phone calls with these other people? Are you doing that? And you guys, are you still doing that? Put it in the comments. Let us know, guys. Are you still doing yeah. free calls? How many times have you guys hopped on, a, or when was the last time you hopped on a one-hour call and they didn't buy from you? Um, if you can just drop it, just play all out with us. If it's you, just put a why, uh, put any kind of comment. Dennis is going to kind of get to the point of how to avoid that too. And well, he's actually already said that. <laughs> Publish some content and share it. Yeah. Put it out there. Put out your process. And here's a scary one. I've coached yeah. a lot of agencies on this one. Publish your price. Oh, you know, but no, the price is dependent upon this. And no, no, publish your price. Because if you serve chiropractors, you need to know what the price is because the price leads to a package. A package is a repeatable set of tasks that you do, packaged up. Uh, if you guys, how many of you guys are still doing custom packages for every single one of your clients? If you're still doing custom for each one, you're not going to scale. 
Because once you get past seven or eight clients, you've lost track of what's going on. You want repeatable excellence where you, you can consistently deliver that result and you have other people on your team that are doing it and doing the same package over and over again. It doesn't mean you're not creative. It doesn't mean you don't think. It doesn't mean you're low quality. My friend Welton just bought a, a Model X. I love it, right? Have you been in a Model X or any of that? They're fantastic. Guess mm -hmm. what? It's a template. It's a template that comes off the factory, right? And of course you want, the, you want it to be reliable and repeatable. Uh, pilots, right? Pilots fly the same way. They, they need to follow a template, a process to make sure it's being done the, the right way. Would you ever get on a plane, Rahul, where the pilot says, you know, I've never flown before, but I'm going to try this new way of flying. What do you say? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> I'm jumping off. Yeah. But or, one thing, I, I like what you mentioned about uh, the emergency room analogy, because I just wrote down emergency room marketing. That just yeah. kind of means that you've published so much authoritative content that by the time you get the call, like you mentioned, people are ready to iron yeah. out the details because you're already hired. It's just the logistics of what the execution will look like. Yeah. And at that point, you are figuring out what they need. You're diagnosing and you're making a recommendation. <clears throat> so let me ask you this, Rahul and everyone else here. How many salespeople are in the emergency room at the hospital? By that, but really quick, let me clarify. By, by that question, do you mean the salespeople, are they receiving hot leads or are they actually the ones that need the surgery on their process? Oh, I'm just, I'm saying literally. So if we go to an emergency room right now and there's all these patients that are coming in with coronavirus or broken legs or whatever, how many salespeople does, does, do the hospital have in the emergency room? Wouldn't it be all of them? Well, technically, but I'm talking in the traditional definition of a salesperson so zero then zero well why zero. not i mean if they had more salespeople, they would they'd get more sales wouldn't they <laughs> that's true. how much of i want to hear in the comments what percent of the time do you spend selling in your agency and when i mean selling i mean convincing someone to buy or giving a presentation on what you do or you know asking i mean the typical sales kinds of like what percent of the time do you spend doing that what is it that like while people are answering like what do you what do you see out there in the marketplace? Um, is it like let's just say forty percent on average is about forty percent. Yeah. And if they're new, because we've done this hundreds of times, so it's like Groundhog Day for me. But the number one issue is for people that are in these agency groups is that they want more leads and clients. Mm -hmm. I hear that all day long, and they think that that's their issue because they're not making enough money and they needed to be able to pay their bills. And did you know that 34% that, uh, of Americans last month didn't pay any rent at all? Not even they pay, pay half, they paid zero rent. That's how bad things are right now. Right. Zero rent, not even like 10% 10, 10 of the rent or whatever it is. But the, the, the new agency owners, they think the issue is they need more business. So they try to say yes to everything. They hop on any, anything that even looks like a client, they'll like hop on it, right? And talk to them, they'll discount their prices. They'll say, yes, we do this and we do that. And I understand why people do that. That is unfortunately going to sink you down further in the hole. What you have to do is choose a niche, which sounds counterintuitive that you have to limit the number of services that you have. You have to raise your prices. If you have some clients already, you have to double your prices. No, but I'll lose all my clients. You'll lose some of your clients, but you'll see who really cares about you and whether you're delivering value. I've, I've advised thousands of agencies to do this, and it works. Because when you raise that price, you can deliver better service. And then you get more of that same kind of client, which is what we call a lighthouse client. Right. And then you have that. Totally. And you get the economics of scale and hiring and yeah. taking a CEO role as well. Yeah. And then you're doing one thing yeah, over and over again, you know? Out there? Yeah. No, sorry yeah, about yeah, that. It goes back to what you said earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, back to what you said earlier. You don't go walk up to a girl and say, marry me. It's, people don't spend the time to educate either themselves and their own yeah. agency or their end client um, about that no like, and trust factor. Yeah. So as an agency, you should not spend any time doing consulting because most of that consulting you can put out there for free, prepackaged, in guides and videos and whatnot. So give away, here's the, here's the dynamic for you to grow your agency. Give away all the knowledge you have for free. 
package it up, put it in advance. That way you don't have to keep repeating the same thing over and over again in these one hour free calls. Charge exorbitantly for your time. And the, the thing you want to charge for is the execution of a package, which is to deliver a result. Because that small business, they want sales and leads. They do not want hours of consulting time. They do not want 10 hours of SEO week per month. Who wants that? What the heck is that? What am I going to get for that? I want more patience. I don't care how many likes and comments and fans and retweets I get. I want sales, right? As a small business owner, I, that's what I want. So sell them what they want. They want more leads. But in order to do that, they've got to bring, they, they've got to do their part, which is they got to make their videos. They have to interview the clients. They have to, you know, have everything available. And then you can put it on the website. Then you can run ads. Then you can do whatever with the content. The number one mis or bottleneck I see in servicing <clears throat> clients is the lack of content. Or it's content, but it's crap, right? And then whose fault is it? Well, I paid you. You're the agency. You're supposed to do all this. Um, no, I'm not the chiropractor. I can't go on video talking about adjusting your back and spine. You need to do that. No, but I pay you to do this, and I don't want to be on camera. Well, sorry. Our landing page isn't converting because they freaking don't even get a sense of who you are. Why are they going to call the phone number? Oh, but I thought you really, you guys are really good at HubSpot and Infusion. It has nothing to do with any of that. So that's why you set the expectation in advance. You put the training out there. So by the time they come to you, it's very clear that they're going to be making videos. And here's the structure of the videos. I need a three by three. I need three why, three how, and three what videos. And if you're not willing to do that, I'm the chef. I'm going to change the analogy from the doctor to the chef. Me as a chef, I cannot cook that meal for you unless you bring the beef and the vegetables and the olive oil or whatever, right? If you bring these ingredients to me, I'm a chef. I'm well-trained. Here's my recipe in my package. Here's how I execute it. Here's examples of every time I've made beef bourguignon or whatever it is that you like to eat, right? Here's my menu of three things that I offer. Ideally one thing, like I'm Chick-fil-A and I make chicken sandwiches, no hamburgers, right? And I do this package over and over again. If you do that and you make it clear what you have to offer, you're not gonna deal with all these people who are gonna waste your time saying, do you do this and do you do that? I bet you if we go to your website, I'm talking to you, if we go to your website, I won't be able to clearly tell what you do. What's your package? Tell me, or are you, do you service every small business in your town or do you service dentists? Oh, you service dentists. Okay, well, tell me more about the other dentists you've done this for. Show me the checklist for the dentist. Show me the step-by-step -step processes. Some of the dentists are happy to talk about their stuff, right? Or the real estate agents or whatever. Here's how you organize it. Here's examples. And then it's not a testimonial. Now you're teaching. You're actually showing how to do it. That's awesome. Do that. Yeah. And this will be incredible for you. Yeah, no, 100%. And that's so simple. It's like if you have that domain expertise and you just share your knowledge with the world, then you get those yeah. pre-vetted clients that are calling for an appointment versus calling for what does it cost? Exactly. Um, they're not going to be the Groupon type people. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I remember you saying that a long time ago, like when I think you were speaking at Billy Jeans or something in 2016, and you said, just give away your knowledge for free, but charge a lot for your time. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so my analogy to that is if you give uh, Bill Belichick's uh, it was a Super Bowl winning, winning playbook to the Cleveland Browns, they're still not going to win because they still need to hire Bill Belichick. So That's right. You can always give away the playbook. It's just that the execution is where people can't fulfill. Yep. Awesome, guys. Awesome, I'd love to hear, like, what, What's what do you guys yeah. think so far? I want to hear more feedback. Tell me, tell me yeah. what are people saying? Let's get yeah, some interaction. One, one question I saw on here, Dennis, if you want to dive into a question, let me just roll Yeah. Hey guys, this is Q&A time right now. So while we have Dennis here, let's, uh, and he's getting some steps in, so he'll probably hit 10,000 steps by the end of this uh, <laughs> yeah. live on his mobile app or his iPhone app. Uh, ask yeah. away if you have anything about video, confidence, how to hold the phone, anything simple, anything complex, yeah. it all goes here. I think better too when I'm walking. Maybe that's for you too as well. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Like I, I hate sitting still. I'm sitting at a desktop right now. Like when I'm on the phone, I'm just constantly walking around. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I concentrate a lot better. Um, but while, while questions are going to be coming in, um, I'm going to ask a question about the lighthouse. So yeah. when you ask your client, let's say you have like 10 lighthouse clients, you get uh -huh. on the phone with them, call them or whatever the best communication is because you have a good relationship. What do you, what, what do you want <laughs> them to see like talk about saying hey I, like i built this real estate business it's been freaking awesome where i was stuck and then these guys helped me put this marketing in order and now uh -huh. my business is all resurrected i get to spend time with my children get to go to t-ball practice uh -huh. get to take a vacation without any stress 
Like, would that be right. a lighthouse video you get from your client? A lighthouse is a, is a type of client that you want more of. Right. Where you can repeat it based on a recipe that you have documented with their participation, step by step, that you've turned into a book that also is a series of videos such that it's actually a course. The Lighthouse client is not just any random real estate agent if you're doing it for real estate agents, not mm -hmm. just any random chiropractor if you're doing it for chiropractors, but one that everyone else in the industry would respect as like, oh, well, if the Golden State Warriors are driving more sales of jerseys and tickets, then certainly the Detroit Pistons or Miami Heat or LA Lakers or the you know Manchester United soccer team, certainly they're going to respect that. Right. It has to be one that others in the industry will respect. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't have a prominent one, you could start with a with a quasi lighthouse. We'll call it a flashlight that is someone that you've done it for. Maybe, you know, when you start your agency, you didn't start off by tackling the, you know, if you're in the world of pro sports, you might not start with the Golden State Warriors. That's a little bit risky because it's high profile. And if you screw that thing up, it's kind of bad. So you start with something a little smaller and you bootstrapped up that up to a lighthouse because the lighthouse, because they're well known, because it's well documented, because you've put it in places where other people can respect that, that creates high authority. High authority is why people buy. There's three components of authority. There's who, there's where, and there's what. So the who is, who is it? Who's it with? Is it, authority could be like, um, Videos of me and Mark Zuckerberg, right? There's videos of me and Mark Zuckerberg arguing about Facebook privacy and stuff. I happen to be right, but it doesn't matter. It, it's high authority because then people will say, well, this guy must know something about Facebook because he's arguing with Mark Zuckerberg. So that's where, where is it? Is it in a, on your Facebook profile? Is it on the news? Is it on a high profile publication? Let's say you're serving chiropractors, then I want to I want to be featuring my articles in whatever blog that the, all the chiropractors are watching. Not my blog. I want to put it where they are. What has the highest authority? If you feel that you're going to be, you need to publish most of your content on your blog and your profile, you're self-serving and blind. You need to post it to where they are. What, what has the highest authority? Based on who's saying it, based on where it is, and then what you're saying is step by step. One, two, three, four, five. This is how I achieved a certain result. That's a checklist. That's a recipe. That's not a testimonial. A testimonial is, oh, I took Rahul's class and now I've got a seven-figure agency and I'm doing really well. Yeah, but you didn't tell me how you did it. Tell me how you did it step by step, right? The doctors are not hiding their, do you think, do you think a great surgeon is going to say, if I ask him, hey, how do you do this procedure? He's like, that's a secret. I can't tell you. No, it's published in the medical journals. He teaches other surgeons how to do it, right? Anyone who plays, oh, it's intellectual property, run away from these people, right? Because that means they don't really know what they're doing. They're trying to trick you. I'm running agencies all the time that do this kind of, oh, we have this SEO tricks and, you know, I hope you understand it's a trade secret. I'm like, of course I understand. I understand that you are a scammer, right? Mm -hmm. So it's who's saying it, how, high author how authoritative are they to that audience that you want to incept? Where is it being said and what is being said? Look at any content you've ever created. So that's why I like Rahul, I think you and I, we were at like TNC a couple of years ago and we made some videos or we we're a digital marketer. We made some videos together. Well, that's high authority to anyone who's a digital marketer because you've got high authority digital marketing people. You're filming it at Digital Marketer, which is in quarantine right now. I was there the day, before, the, the day right when they closed it because I filmed a full day elite workshop there. And then what are we saying? Here's how you do this. Here's how you get more reviews. Here's how you rank on Google. Here's how you, right? So look at any content you've ever created and categorize it according to those three components of authority, 10 points each. Therefore, you have a 30 point maximum. And put that inside this beautiful piece of technology we call Google Sheets, right? 30 points. And then look at what has the highest authority of all these pieces of content. And that's the stuff you're gonna share on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, your blog. Therefore, your distribution is independent of your production. So when, when you have a lighthouse, they're doing all the work for you. 
So you can see here, these are people who are following what we do, cameras, and I've got all this, all this stuff look here. Look at the head. Here. Look at the to Dennis produce head. content. The Dennis you had, go yeah. back. Oh, Remember? the Dennis you had, oh, this one, the Dennis you had, yeah. Uh, yeah, like look, you. <laughs> I got toilet paper. I got hate for all this toilet paper, right? Yeah. Or, you know, I got my blitz metric signs. Here I've got my, I won the War Room Wicked Smart uh, contest. So I gave the best presentation at War Room, which is a $20,000 mastermind if you want to go. Or uh, Dennis U. Frisbee. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Can you, All the stuff. Can, got you a, a picture? Uh, can you post a picture of you and Blitz. The, Dennis U, the Dennis U. head? That's the one I gave you at TNC, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, this one. This is one you gave me. Yeah, I see. That's <laughs> good. It. Take a snap of this. Yeah, let's uh, let's here. Have we'll take a a little... picture. Let's take a picture really quick. Hang on. There you go. Move it up. Let's get it there. Oh, a little blurry. But... Do this way. There we are. Yeah, it's a little. There's a little shine on it, but we got it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, let's do one. Or like this. There we are. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. We do have a couple questions from the comments. Do you want to dive into those a little bit? Yeah. All right, here. All right, yeah, let's ahead. do that. Right, Dennis, we got from Alvin. He's asking, when was the last time you actually said no to a client and what was the reason that you told them no? Oh, <clears throat> well, I say no all the time to prospects because they have unreasonable expectations or they do something that demonstrates that they would become what's called a nightmare client, such as they disrespect our time, or they, uh, they don't want to adhere to our recommendations, or they say, well, I talked to so-and-so, and they said that I should do it this way versus that way. What do you think of that? You're not going to, if you come to me and I'm your surgeon, and you know, I talked to this other surgeon who said we're going to do it this way, I'm just not going to entertain that, right? Because we just don't have time for that. I'm not here to, or, or worse, they come in and they try to adjust the ad campaigns and then they blame us when their campaigns are messed up. Because just because you're the client doesn't give you the right to abuse our people. Yeah, right? and I think that's actually, you, know, you can fire us, we can fire you. Yeah, I think yeah. that's one of the hardest things for newer agency owners to understand is that you can't take on every single client that you have to vet them out and your life will be a lot easier if you pick and choose who you work with instead of the other way around. Yeah. 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 And I get it. Like sometimes you might be in a situation, you know, I, I, I've been here before where I needed the money. So I was just like, I've, I've said yes to clients who are not, not, I mean, it's a well known name. It's like, Oh, it's, you know, like Red Bull, like Red Bull was our client for a few years, but man, they were, they asked for so much, but I was in the, in the trap where I'm like, well, it's Red Bull. So, I mean, how do you say no to Red Bull? You know, you, well, you can because the person there was kind of an a-hole, right? Right. No, totally. If one, they don't get back to us in time, here's another. Sorry, it's getting cut out. I yeah, think. go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to ask, I'm going to go through one more question right here. There's a couple more, actually. This go one ahead. actually is my sister right here. Um, you end up having to coach your clients on how to create quality content and, and then you give them guidance. Are, are you giving them the guidance for free? And are they typically able to grasp it and deliver something to you that you think is good? Yes, you have to coach them, but you have to balance between having your, your training on how to do it. Like, for example, we don't say just make whatever video you want. You have to put it into the structure of the three by three grid. And so we put that training out in advance so they can study it. And we'll even bring clients together and have group coaching. Then we'll do one-on-one -on -one tweaking of that content. But what we're not going to do is teach us a course from scratch unless they're paying us, you know, 10 grand, 20 grand a month for consulting. Understand that here, here's your, your, the, the way to understand it. The difference between consulting versus implementation, okay? The clients are paying you for the results. So therefore, implementation. If they want you to teach them along the way, that's a whole different matter. That's separate from your retainer, okay? Now, of course, they're going to hold you accountable for the result. And you can tell them, you know, this video isn't performing as well as it could be, or there's a few things that you need to adjust. Here's our checklist and training on how to do that. 
Now you, you have to use some EQ so that they don't think like, oh, well, Dennis thinks he's so important that he doesn't want to answer this kind of question, right? You can say that the consultant, and make it clear, that's why you have it in your package. In your package, put in bold, consulting is separate. We're not here to train up all your people. We're not here to project manage you. We're not here to chase you on the access to the website and other stuff, right? That's why we expect you to be quick in your communication, one day turnaround time. We expect you to adhere to the processes and framework that we have. You're not, we're not gonna deviate from the framework because this is what it works. You cannot go to Tesla and say that, you know, I want a Tesla, but I want it to look like this and be a limo. Or like, no, there's only certain options you can have, right? And that's what we offer. That's what we call customized. We don't offer custom. Actually, I know, well, Rahul, your shirt says custom creative. By definition, creative is always custom, but we, I like to say customized because we're tweaking an existing framework. We're not making something completely new from scratch, which is risky, right? If, if you go to, a, we have a friend who's, a, who's an eye doctor. His name's Mark Page. And he's done LASIK or whatever it is. He's done like procedures over and over again, right? Thousands of times. And would, would you ever go to him if he said, hey, I've got this brand new procedure. I've never done it before. I'm gonna try that on your eyes. What would you say to that, Rahul? <laughs> I mean, absolutely not, unless I have no other choice and it's my last option ever, and it's a brand new procedure and I have a weird infection or something, but otherwise, yeah. Not, uh, and you want to go to, you'd rather go to the eye doctor that's like, yeah, I've done this, this, this LASIK procedure 10,000 times over the last 20 years and nobody's ever died or, you know, that's what you want. And that, that's the way you're, you want your client to see you as a doctor. If you feel that somehow you have to present, present something new and exciting and different, then you're selling innovation, you're not selling results. And it's okay to sell innovation if you're very clear that you're selling innovation. But if you're selling innovation, you're not, you're not selling results. Results are, you wanna drive leads and sales or whatever, we have a package in our friends. That's what the attorney is. That's what if we need to replace the transmission on a three series BMW, this is how we do it. This is how it's done. Does that mean that that, that mechanic is somehow like dumb? The pilot before the plane takes off, following a pre-flight checklist is somehow dumb. And if he was a really good pilot, he wouldn't follow the checklist. No, that's Where's your checklist? Yeah. I would leave you with that. Where's your checklist? Do you have a checklist or are you just kind of going by the seat of your pants? Yeah. No, that's important. I mean, even even though I, I conduct a lot of the, the phone calls for new onboarding of clients that want to work with us, I use a framework that's on my desk. So I check all the boxes through our conversation. Yeah. Um, and even, even yeah, like Tom Brady has the little wristband of all the plays, the, the most important plays on his arm. And he's the world's yeah. great quarterback. Yeah. You know what you want? This. You see this? Look at this. This is our playbook. This is how we go through all our stuff. And we give this to clients so they can see what we're doing in here, right? Does that not Imagine if you just had me, you're doing, or what we're gonna do for you, okay? We pointed at the particular items that we're gonna do. Would you not feel a little bit more confident of, of what we're doing? Like for example, we're gonna set up digital plumbing first. So all the tracking. Then you told us our goal. Your goal is $17 per call per lead. That's good. Okay, here's the content we need that supports that. And then from there, here's the targeting that ties to the content. Then we're gonna run ads. And if, you, and if they say, oh, we're gonna run ads right now. Like, no, no, no. We need to have plumbing. We need to have our tracking in place first because otherwise we won't know what's going on. Oh no, we already have the plumbing. No, but we're going to come in and verify it first because there's always something we find that's broken along the way. But it was already working and all that. We just want you to come in and tune. Yeah, we can tune, but we still have to come back here through this particular process, right? And this is how we do it. Would you not feel more comfortable? Would you not waste a lot less time? Where's your checklist? I'm not, I'm not asking this rhetorically. I'm asking you, if you're on this call, I'm asking you, where's your checklist? And if you don't have one, what are you going to do about that? Buy it from Dennis. <laughs> <That's> yeah, <what. laughs> <Good>. <laughs> and we could even put your name on it, your logo, 
but then yeah. you have to give us the ingredients, right? You have to give us the ingredients where we have to, you have to tell us what your lighthouse is. You have to make videos about that. You have to demonstrate that, you know, you know what you're doing. You don't even have to have like all this fancy, this is a fancy camera. You don't even need stuff like this, right? You just need your phone. And everything I've done here in our little get together has, has been on my phone. I didn't even use any equipment, did I? No, and and actually, um, I think I posted this on one of my Facebook posts. Uh, you were the first. You were the reason I did my first video a long time ago. Oh wow! <laughs> I did my why video, and uh, you're like <laughs> you're like publish it and tag me on the wall. Instead, I I tried to cheat and I direct messaged it to you. Ah. <laughs> uh, see now I got my road mic, but I'm not even using it. I'm just using my phone. Oh yeah, Cody's seeing my setup. I have the I have all the fancy equipment, all the fancy lights, and I end up just using my my either my Surface or just my phone. Yeah, they they get used zero percent of the time. <laughs> it's great, it's great to have the setup, but not actually go and use it. Yeah, so well, so at least it looks good, right? Yeah, no, it definitely looks good from an aesthetic front point of view. It looks fancy, but really quick, I want to summarize for everybody who's still here and uh, at the end. So Dennis is giving away his personal branding cheat sheet. So if you do want it, hashtag cheat sheet, we'll get it to you. I might put like a link um, so we can mass send it via like a bot or something. Um, and then um, uh, to talk about what he's talking about, productize your services so they're not custom every single time. They can be customizable, niche down and try to find your lighthouse client so you can find more of those and then leverage your personal story and your brands of your personality, your life, how you help people and do that three by three grid. So if you Google Dennis, you three by three grid, you'll find yeah. that tons of people's blogs from his to mine to Vendasta. Um, and if anybody yeah. wants the link, we can share it with you too. Yep. Yeah. And this is what I'll share with you. This is how I organize my brand to be able to drive leads and sales for my agency. It starts from my connections, the content that I produce together with these connections that then we assemble into the three by three, which is the, the topic wheel, but condensed to my greatest hits, which is why, how, and what, right? Three stages in the funnel wrapped into an onion. So I got my topics. What are the things I care about? Could be throwing Frisbees, could be Facebook ads, could be whatever, right? I tie that with my network. I have content associated with those people, just like what you've done, Rahul, right? And then I'm taking all this content here and I'm sharing it across all these different networks so that when people see that I'm with Larry Kim or George Leith or Welton Hong or whatever, they're like, oh, okay, now I've accepted their audience and they realize that I'm authoritative on this topic. Remember the three components of authority I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Then they come in and they, they reach out to us. This is the emergency room here in the middle. They come to us and that's when they wanna buy. That's when they wanna get on a call. That's when you know, they come into our framework. And so I keep extending my network. I keep extending the topics I have. So the area of this box increases because I have more people that I know and I have more topics that I care about. And this builds my lighthouses. Now I've got multiple lighthouses. But as an agency owner, you really need only one. Because from that lighthouse, I'm collecting, see on the left side, I'm collecting all the feedback. I'm documenting what's working. I'm sticking it inside my personal brand manager and then I'm distributing it across all these other channels. That's right, input, processing, output. Then I know my goals, content and targeting because of the lighthouse I serve. That's my X, Y, and Z. I help orthodontists drive more calls via search engine optimization and digital. I don't know, whatever it is, right? You figure out where your X, Y, and Z are. You produce assets against it. Then, uh, that includes all the editing. That's like when you have fiber and stuff. Then I distribute across LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and then I run ads against it, right? That's your four steps, your strategy to the asset production, to distributing it, to the amplifying. And this is the same process you use to grow your agency, as well as to be able to do it for your clients. Mm -hmm. You're going to show your clients the same thing. They want you to run ads here. They want you to make a new website. Okay. Well, I can make you a new website, but where's the content going to come from for this website? And what do you stand for? Right? I've got, I, I need to know who you are. I need to have content that represents it. Then I can push it out there and then run ads. Now, if you're, if you rely primarily upon ads, then you have actually three other questions that you have to ask the client first to qualify them. Where are the ads going to be run? And the answer running on your Facebook page is not a correct answer. 
because we got to send people to a phone call or to a website or to like work like we need to map out this whole thing and then do they have the, the content and the tracking and all that at every step of the way the odds are they don't but if they hire you for just ads but you have to fix all these other things too then now you're out of scope and you're you're not charging them for all this extra work and then they're going to blame you even though they're charging you you're charging for this they're going to blame you for these other things that aren't in place now now who's the dumb dumb all right well there you go hopefully you guys had fun let me let me know in the comments type in yes if you if you had fun if you didn't or you, you feel like you didn't have any value or whatever then then tell me why i want to know what you guys think yes yeah, we got okay. 16 of us on here. So I want to see 16 yeses in here or, or 16 answers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Cody. Yeah. I'm going to emphasize it. You know, I want people to emphasize how much fun they have. Yeah. Give us some capital letters, guys, if it was really good. Yeah. And while you're at it, may as well just smash the like button too. <laughs> well, yeah. Make love. a video too. We like yeah, hearts. Like, like, like actually, actually, all them. Look, yeah, it's real time. We're breaking Facebook right now. I'm I'm doing a Zoom of your Facebook. <laughs> awesome. So we're back to the beginning of the video, we're doing Inception now. So here, here's right. another thing, really quickly, for everybody who is willing and able to do a video now today, something simple. Like look at Dennis's. It's it's the dude threw a freaking frisbee, right? So do anything that you want to do, and tag both Dennis and I in it. And Dennis, oh, we'll get you the cheat sheet anyways, but then I'll yep. add something else on top of it. Our, our Facebook st uh, perfect stranger method. Um, <clears> yep. Everybody totally <laughs> free, so how we're, we're booking calls that are, that are more qualified for our, uh, our agency as well. That may help you um, start booking calls and closing deals during this time as well. Yep. So if you want the items, send an email to operations at blitzmetrics.com and have the subject line be, we love Rahul. <laughs> and then request whatever it is that you want and we'll send it to you, okay? What, what can they request from you? You can request anything. Any training that we have, you can request it. I'll give it to you. Anything that you've seen me talk about, any question on what the odds are we have some training on it. The odds are we have a checklist on it. Whatever you want. I like, like that. The personal story. brand guide. Um, our master presentation or how we use videos or how we edit, how we hire VAs, how we drive sales and engagement here on LinkedIn. Look, look what's going on on LinkedIn. Let me boast on LinkedIn. Look at, look at how much engagement I'm getting on LinkedIn. Look at how, look at people are, in the last hour, I think I've got a hundred people that have made connection requests. How am I doing this? Sales and engagement here on LinkedIn. Look. Okay. What's going on on Whatever you want, send it to operations at blitzmetrics.com with the subject line, I love Rahul, and then say what you want. How's that? I love that. It's not a wow. landing page. It's an email. Sounds like a blank check, guys. I'd, I'd uh, use it if, you, if you've got any idea, get out there, comment. Yep. Send it, and get but you got to do it today. If you send it tomorrow, you're going to say, whoop, you missed it. All right. Awesome. Yeah. I'm just, uh, so where, where to post that video, post it on your own profile and then just yeah. tag Dennis and I, and then, uh, what, do whatever you want, do something fun, something wacky, play with your kids, your dog, whatever, cook something, maybe drop some knowledge for your target audience, whatever you want. Anything goes, um, keep it a short video. What do you want it to be under 15 seconds, Dennis? doesn't matter. Yeah. The best video is the one that you make, just make one. So yep. Basal says, this is beautiful. There's Bonnie. See, look at all these people. These are all beautiful people. Just yep. make a video about anything. The point is to, let me ask you a question because you're a video pro. Same with Cody. What is the best video? I mean, the best video, I mean, I, like it depends on the goal, but I would say the best video is the one you do. <laughs> yes, it's the one you make. That's the answer. Every time these, especially the people that have made no videos, they keep saying, should I make this kind of video or that kind of video? And the question is, my answer is, have you made any videos at all? The, the best video is the one you make. Just make one. Yeah. yeah my, my favorite thing that's preached to people now, including clients, is it's more important now to get quantity out than it is to worry about how nice the video looks. The more you get out there, the more videos yeah. you can better off you are. So you said quantity, not, not qua, is the key. Let me show you one last thing, and then I got to bail. 
yep. just for fun. Okay. So you guys know who Grant Cardone is? Mm -hmm. So we've made these videos and I've made videos, lots of videos with all these. Look, there's my speaker reel, right? You should make a speaker reel too. It makes you look like you might be important, right? So if I come here and you, and look, I'm practicing what I preach. I've got lots and lots of these videos, literally hundreds of videos. Now this is on my page, not my profile. There's lots and lots of them. And let me show you one of them that, because you said quantity, not quality. So I'm gonna play this one thing and I'm gonna bail, but hopefully, because um, I've been teaching the one minute video and this is something people don't seem to understand. Even video producers, they don't seem to understand this but you've got to get this thing right. If you don't, then it's just not going to work for you. Oh, it's almost there. There's Billy Blanks. I had him make one. So rather than me telling you how to make a one minute video, I had Uncle G. See, look, there's, there's me on CNN here. That's kind of fun. I had Uncle G teach people how to make a one minute video. Here, I'll go this way. Hey, guys, Dennis wanted me to send you this uh, one best one minute tip. Oh, hang on a second. You gotta be Let me turn the you sound up. You gotta give people attention. I'm like, hey. All right, here we go. I'm gonna replay this. <laughs> That's one way to get I'll your make attention. It now, if you're in a professional setting, one second. Uh, it might be more like. Yeah, we'll replay this. Hey guys, Dennis wanted me to send you this. Uh, one best one minute tip. Bro, you gotta be authentic. You gotta be transparent. You gotta give people attention. I'm like, hey. That's one way to get their attention. Now, if you're in a professional setting. Uh, it might be more like making a big claim. Okay. I guarantee you something. You got to punch. You got to have a hook. You got to get excited. So, and, and let me just say this all that being said, quantity, quantity beats quality. Hear that? Don't kid yourself. You got to get out there a lot. Okay. Hey, you guys be great. 10x everything, thinking 10x levels. And that dude you're working with, oh, oh De Dennis, you. He's a bad, bad man. See what I do? I keep getting your attention. He's a bad, bad man. And that's my little girl right there. She a freak. <laughs> and that used to be grapefruit on my plate. Yeah. See what I'm doing? See what I'm yeah, doing? See what he's doing? So he's demonstrating. You're right. Quantity versus quality. And now this is from my public figure page. Yeah. And I've been boosting it. Okay. Isn't that Insane awesome? lifestyle of millionaire. That's what you got to do. Now he's, yeah. he's doing that on his cell phone, right? Do you think you could do that? Anyone can do that. Yeah. Off yourself. Right. I think it was, it's getting cut out. We don't, we don't. Sorry, it was getting cut out right there. I can't end you with a cutout. Like, let's see if your reception is a little bit better. Oh, I think I lost you guys. There we are. Yeah, I hear, right. yeah, I hear, you're back. You're back. Awesome. I think we may have lost you now. I don't know if you're saying any words right now. You're just spinning around. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Hey, hey Dennis, I know yeah, you got spinning around. I got to run, but it was awesome. Good to see yeah. you, everybody. Thank you so much, Dennis. We appreciate your time. All right. I want to see your videos. Post your videos. Tag me. I'm going to tag you. I'm going to do one too and tag you. There All you right. go. Thanks, everybody. Yep. All right, guys. If you guys like that, we got more fire coming with guys like Dennis. But again, take advantage of his offer. This is absolutely incredible. He's giving away whatever you ask for, totally uh, at the goodness of his heart. So definitely capitalize here while you can, while the offer is available and share this video, this interview, if you saw value, invite your friends to the group. And then uh, I'm going to put a link in the comment right now. Um, so you guys can all um, subscribe to our chat bot. And what that will do is not annoy you or anything, but that will um, allow you to be on all of our future go interviews so we can remind you when we have special guests like Dennis um, and we have a really good lineup coming up soon. There's the link. I'm going to, oh, I just sent it to just to Bonnie. Um, let me go back. Cody, can you paste the little chat bot link in there and then pin it to the top? 
Um, and then you'll see the little chat bot link. You'll be able to pin it to the top or we'll pin it to the top. And then when you subscribe, we'll send you over our perfect stranger method. So if you want the perfect stranger method too, just hashtag perfect stranger. And you'll not only get Dennis's stuff, but you'll also get ours, what works in our agency. Um, and chances are it'll work in yours. And in fact, I'm getting a, a little private message here on my own Facebook page or my messenger that somebody just booked their very first call, just implementing it from yesterday. So the shit works within 24 hours, even within two hours. So if you want the perfect stranger method, hashtag perfect stranger, um, and we'll get you that too. So hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please invite people and thank you guys for spending your Thursday afternoon with us. Thanks guys.